We're live, 706, <laughs> a lot closer to on time, on time arrival. Tonight we're going to talk about commissions that I have, have run in the past, 5.3 liters, nice round number, 500 horsepower, but all without boost or nitrous. So no superchargers, no nitrous, no turbos, no force induction of any kind, no power adders, just all motor, you know, the good stuff. So we'll talk about, a I have three combinations that we use and I've got videos up on this. I just did a story for the guys at Summit Racing on a combination that I did with a strictly performance 5.3 liter that made 500 horsepower, naturally aspirated horsepower on the 5.3 liter using one of their cams. Not surprisingly, similar to other stuff that I've done because the three things that, that's two, <laughs> The three things that are required to make good power with an LS, especially if you're starting off like we do, normally you'd start off with the junkyard LS motor 5.3 liter. And the reason that you would choose a 5.3 over other combinations, 4.8, fairly obvious, not that 4.8 is bad, 5.3 is just bigger, easier to make power with. And along those lines, well, Richard, if a 5.3 is better than a 4.8, obviously a 6.0 is even better than a 5.3. And you're right. It absolutely is. It's much easier to make 500 horsepower if that's your goal with a six liter than it is with a five three. But as I illustrated in the story that I did for the guys at, at Summit Racing, the reason that most people don't use six O's is because you don't find six O's in the wrecking yard. At least I don't. And judging by, I've been to many wrecking yards and always look for LS stuff when I go there. And judging by the results that I've found, you're not going to find six liters nearly as often as you find four eights and five threes. And the reason for that, very simple. GM made a lot more of the base motors than they made of the specialty motors, or they made a lot more 1500s and they made 2500s and 3500s, stuff that they would have put the bigger motors in. They sold a lot fewer six liters than they did these smaller motors. So there's lots, there's an abundance of six liters. The last time I went there, I'm sure that there were at least a dozen and I didn't look specifically to see exactly whether they were 4.8 or 5.3, but they all had 706 and 862 heads. So they were one of those two things. I didn't check the the um, the VIN or anything to find out which which motor which ex ex exact motor they were, but they were all that. And none of them were six liters. And I've only ever found one aluminum 5.3, by the way, which I snatched up, which was good. So the reason that you would pick a 5.3 or the reason that most people pick five threes is but comparing the five three to the four eight the five three just bigger easier to make power that's the way it is if you wanted to make 500 horsepower with a 60 it's just a camshaft away from doing that and so we'll clear it up because there will be a lot of guys that will be watching this that don't understand what we're talking about there seems to be confusion about the power numbers or whatever when I run a 5.3 liter on the on the on the dyno, when we run an LM7, for instance, very common, you know, your run of the mill 5.3, an iron block deal with with 706 heads, a very very small camshaft, truck manifold, all of that stuff. When I run on the engine dyno, that motor might be rated anywhere from 290 ish horsepower to a little over 300. It might be down as low as 280, but it's all going to be rated in there depending on what tune it is and what what year it is and what engine or what uh, vehicle it came in. So a lot of that is just in the tune. But when I run it, I don't run it the way that the OEMs rate it at. So when they rate it, they rate it with everything on the motor the way that it actually is in the vehicle. But they don't rate it at the tire. They rate it at the flywheel as driven on an engine dyno. But when they rate it, they rate it with a full exhaust, including cats, cat back, everything, stock exhaust manifolds. They run it with full accessories, air conditioning, power steering, water pump, alternator, all of that stuff in place. They also rate it with a full air intake system, mass air meter, air filter assembly, all of that stuff. If it has any kind of acoustic silencer or anything, all of that stuff is in place. They run it at the factory temperature and they also run it with the factory too. The way that you get it in the vehicle not rated at the tire, rated at the flywheel. But the way that you get it is this is what it will do. And that's that's their rating. And so when you see a motor that's rated at 300 horsepower, and when I run it, it makes 350. The difference is all of those things are different when I run it. When I run it, we normally run it with headers, first of all, and some kind of fairly open exhaust, sometimes just collector extensions, sometimes three-inch tubing with very high flow, 
meaning no restriction MagnaFlow mufflers on it. We run it with no accessories, just an electric water pump. We run it colder than the factory does. We don't run it at 200 degrees. We run it closer to 100 degrees. Usually 130 or 140 is a, is a fairly good range. Um, we run it with no air inlet system, just an open throttle body. And we obviously run it with an optimized tune. So all of those things combine to have this combination make more power. We haven't cheated anything and it's not a case of I've had people, oh, that's just a happy dyno. No, the difference isn't between what they're saying it is and what this dyno is saying it is. It's tested in a completely different manner. All of those changes that I just mentioned are the reason that it makes more power the way that it's tested on an engine dyno and not just this dyno. Every other dyno it tested in that configuration, it would make the same power. So tested like that, it makes, it makes about 350 horsepower. So when I'm telling you it makes 500, basically it makes 150 more than stock. Sometimes a little more than 150, 158 <laughs> or 152 or 151 or whatever. But it's making that much more. So when I say we're making a 500 horsepower one, we aren't going from 300 to 500. We're going from about 350 to 500. And so everybody have that? Everybody okay with that? And that, that holds true for all of the testing that I do. Everything that's run on the engine dyno is usually run in some sort of optimized form. It certainly has an optimized air fuel and timing curve because we make sure that we do that. We don't just run it with some run of the mill factory tune because that's not optimized. The factory tune they put in so that every knucklehead that drives it that <laughs> puts 87 octane gas in it and wants to stomp on it going up a hill, pulling a trailer, that it's not gonna rattle itself to death. They have to put safety measures in for those kinds of guys. So the, the question then is how do we get one of these five threes that are that make about 350 horsepower in stock trim with a stock head, stock cam, stock intake, stock exhaust manifolds? How do we get one of those to make 500 horsepower? Well, I got three examples and, and there are others too, but the first one is the one that I did the story on for the guys at Hot Rod or, or for, and I've done these for Hot Rod too, but for Summit Racing so that you'll see this story coming out. But this was a 5.3 liter. This particular one didn't come from the wrecking yard, but it, but it was basically a stock bottom end. The guys from Strictly Performance sent it. And they sent it, hopefully, for me to do a big bang on, and that never materialized because I ended up hurting this motor. So I'll take full responsibility for that. But before that happened, we this motor was a stock iron block 5.3, stock cast crank, just like a junkyard motor is, stock Gen 4 rods, just like a junkyard motor is, and this had cast pistons, although these pistons were, they were a factory piston, if I remember correctly, but they had been hard anodized. So they had some sort of hard anodized coating on them. Uh, I think to try to make them stronger for boosted applications. And it had ring gap in it so that we could run this boosted, which we did many, many times. The other thing that this thing had going for it, and this is something you'll see that's common among all of these combinations. They have what I call the big three. And the big three, the things that make power, we can talk about all of the golf ball dimples and, and piston flips and rod ratios and all the little things. The big things that make power are the heads, the cam, and the intake manifold. If you get those things working right, you can make lots of power, as illustrated by these three examples. So this first example, the first thing that it had going for it was a set of ported heads. Now, they weren't what I would call like a double throwdown, full race, <laughs> stage two or three or five or 10 or whatever number you want to adjust, apply to it. They, they, these heads were done by the guys at KTEC who know a thing or two about making LS power, having been involved in the Chevy race program. They have a CNC program, I think, that they performed to these 706 and 862 heads, but it did still feature the stock valve sizes. So they didn't go all in like a lot of guys do, the total engine airflow stuff that we've run. Most of the programs that guys do also feature bigger valves, either a, a two inch, a 2055, something, some kind of bigger valve. These had um, factory size valves. In, in fact, it had factory valves in it. We did do a valve spring upgrade on it. We put some Brian Tooley Racing dual springs on them because we were putting a good size cam in this thing. So it had ported KTEC heads. It also had a Summit Stage 4 cam, a Pro LS camshaft. That, that cam was a 625, 605 lift, a 234, 247 at 50, 
and 113 uh, LSA. So right away, you notice that it has a lot of intake duration, which puts it right near the limit of available factory piston to valve clearance. I didn't even measure this. We just ran it. <laughs> so I don't know what it was. I know people would like to know what a measurement. They'd like to know what, what fits and what doesn't fit. Apparently that one fit because it worked. Um, and th this combination, th that camshaft and the ported heads was teamed with a fast LSXR intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body. As we normally do, we had long tube headers. In this case, this thing had inch and seven eighths headers feeding three inch collector extensions. We have, as we always do, well, always, we had uh, a Holly HP management system. The management system isn't critical for making the power other than giving me the ability to make the air fuel what I want it to be and make the timing what I want it to be. And by that, I mean, I ask the motor what it wants and I give it that and it responds with making power. And when I give it something that it doesn't like, it doesn't make power or it stops making power. So that combination produced 508 horsepower and I think 435 foot pounds of torque. So it did very well. And that goes to show you that a good size cam and ported heads, the right kind of intake manifold, you know, can make pretty good power. The other two combinations were very similar. One of them was one that I used on a big bang motor and it was the, the 5.3 that I did for trucking. That thing ended up making over 1300 horsepower with two uh, CX Racing 76 millimeter turbos and a big air to water intercooler on it. But before that, we ran an NA. That was a 5.3, an LM7, ring gap, junkyard deal. It had a comp 459 camshaft in it, which is similar to the Summit cam, slightly smaller, 617, 624 lift, 113 degree LSA, 231, 239, you know, because it's a cathedral port cam. Fast LSXR T intake manifold, 102 millimeter throttle body, long tube headers, you know, Holly system, all that on there. And that one ended up making a little over 500 horsepower NA as well. The final one was one that I did when I was doing the Big Bang test for nitrous. So we were trying, the goal was to make a thousand horsepower on nitrous, starting with a 500 horsepower NA motor. And in this case, the 500 horsepower NA motor had, uh, Let's see. Oh, I, I, the, the, the junkyard five, three with the, that I did the big bang on had trick flow two fifteen heads on it. And the, and the comp four fifty nine cam and a fast intake manifold. So the final one was the one that we did the, the big bang nitrous test on. That was also a five, three junkyard high mileage ring gap had a high ram intake manifold on it with two 4150 throttle bodies on top. So not, not a, a front mounted 102 millimeter throttle body, two 4150s with the dual quad top on a high ram. It had 220 trick flow as cast heads, also very good. And it had a Brian Tully Racing Stage 4 camshaft, very similar uh, to the Summit cam, 233, 250 at 50. 618 or 610, something like that, 596, 113 degree lobe separation angle. So, you know, over 600 lift or near or slightly over 600, 230 ish um, intake duration. And, you know, and it had the, a, a 220 head is probably comparable to a 215 CNC head, I would guess. The ASCAS head works really well. So camshaft, intake manifold, and cylinder head obviously go a long way. And it's possible to do this kind of thing to exceed 500 horsepower. And there were more tricks that could be done with milling the head and flat top pistons and more compression. And, you know, you could do things that all, all of these had, if I remember correctly, they all had like truck oil pans on them with windage trays. So there's more power to be had with the oiling system. There, there's, there's certainly more that could be had there. Of the three of them, the high ram, all, all of these made really good power, especially the, the ones with the fast intake manifolds had really good average power production, much better than the, much better than the high ram did. The ones with the fast manifold did obviously better. And we were purposely trying to do that on the nitrous one because we didn't want to make a lot of power. We thought that that's what would hurt it as it turned out. 
<laughs> my aggressiveness and and uh, not listening to the motor and not watching the tune is actually what hurt that motor. It wasn't the overabundance of torque. It was the lack of fuel. Um, but we were trying to have short, uh, short runners on that to have it make peak power high in the engine speed. And then we could hit it with nitrous right at the end and, and look like a hero. And that's what happened. So it's possible to make 500 horsepower with a 5.3. In fact, the, my next goal would be to try to, and this is, this is all the stock bottom end stuff. So this wasn't with like ultra high compression or even bigger cams that would be possible if you had pistons that had valve reliefs in them so that you have available piston to valve clearance. And with some kind of small, you know, I wouldn't probably run a big dome on these because I'm not a big fan of big dome pistons, but more dome, you know, a plus 10 or something with valve reliefs in it would be kind of nice. And then, like I said, there are other tricks that you could do to, to try to get this thing to, to get these things to make more power. There are probably, these are all off the shelf cams or nothing, you know, ultra technical about them we probably could get more at certainly more average power production with a tighter lsa on these things um you know or different camp profiles altogether so there's more there's definitely more power to be had you know you got port match the intake <laughs> um so there there are things that could be done so i want you to let me know what, what we're going to do is i'm going to do a poll here Numbers should be fairly small of that on this. So have you made more than 500 horsepower on an all motor 5.3 liter? Let me know. You can let me know in the comments, but you can let me know in the poll too. So hopefully everybody out there watching it, if you guys are watching it, you don't get to answer the poll during the during the live feed. If you're here during the live feed, one of the benefits, come join the live feed. You can ask questions. You get to, you can ask whatever you want. Doesn't have to be about the topic that we're talking about. Doesn't have to be about 500 horsepower, all motor 5.3s. If you want to talk about a 4.8 or a Pontiac or a K-Series Honda or Bonneville stories or whatever, just come and we're all getting together and talking. So you have the ability to do that. So I'm going to go back and try to check some questions now. Whoa. Five hundo. What's up? <laughs> Admiral holders on TV. Nice. All motor is the best. Honestly, if you're not going to boost a five, three and you want a nice NA build, just build the six. O. found an untouched six. Nice. High compression piston, stage four cam, 228 heads. Can't forget the fast intake manifold. When you run any engine on the dyno, it makes more power than in the car. On flywheel horsepower is different than chassis dyno horsepower. There's an aluminum 5.3 LH6 sitting in my front yard that needs a cam, but the guy doesn't want to fix it, <laughs> but he still owes money on it. Do manufacturers run engines with an electrical load? That's a good question, Ben. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know how their power steering is hooked up. And I also don't know what the what the load capacity is on the alternator. I don't know if they have chosen, maybe in the SAE test procedure, there is something there that dictates that, but I don't know what it is. It would be interesting to find out. Honestly, the load on the alternator, I think is pretty minimal in terms of power drag. I don't think it would be a lot, but it might be one or two or something. Richard, you should start running with three inch exhaust and some 40 series Flowmasters. We do normally run with a three inch exhaust and we run the mufflers that I have on the exhaust that I always run because it's a V band clamp. It's very easy to hook up. And that's the reason that I did this. So I got tired of year after year after year using these silly slip fit tubes that go in everything. And then you have to drill a hole and put a screw in it. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Let's, let's just put V bands on all of this stuff. So it V bands together and then the exhaust never comes off. Cause whenever we're running with all of these slip fit things, even when you put a screw in it, that breaks, it vibrates and it breaks. And then it, then you'll be doing a run. And then that part of the exhaust will just shoot off and it'll change the power curve. And you're like, ah, the exhaust broke and then you got to go fix it. And it's really hot. And so V banding it just like a perfect way to go. 
100 horsepower per liter at the flywheel should be attainable. I think so too. I think a 530 horsepower 5.3 is is certainly doable. We have way we have way more cylinder head flow than we need to make this kind of power. So it certainly should be doable. We have 600 plus horsepower worth of airflow, so that should be certainly possible. Richard, LS453 shootout. Why do you want to do that? I mean, they're technically a normal truck 5.3. We they would gain a lot from <laughs> from an intake manifold, certainly, but but then they would gain the same from the, as they do the other stuff. Our flex fuel sensor is good for running 85. Yes. Head scam intake, HCI. We even have a designations for that. So Admiral, you managed to perfectly sync your phone and your TV. Nice. Phone sock LM7, LS Springs, a resealed ARP hardware all the way around with a sloppy stage three, a 75 shot long tubes. How much power to the crank? I don't have any idea. I've never run that sloppy stage three cam. But if you told me the specs on it, I could I've run a cam that's gonna be like that, probably on a 5.3. But if it had if it has stock heads, it's going to be way down from what these are. Uh, Wesley, don't use the word thoughts when you're asking a question, please, because there's no accessories intake tubing or exhaust when he runs it. Would it make more power with a tighter LSA? It probably will make more power somewhere. Maybe not everywhere, but somewhere. <laughs> Sometimes everywhere. Yeah, it depends. Uh, yeah, Admiral, it might make more power with double overhead cam. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's it's definitely live. <laughs> Can anybody point me in the right direction for a fuel setup for a five three? What fuel setup do you need? Injectors, fuel rail. What? Well, why do you want to see a fully complete done engine with factory ECM done by Richard? First of all, I don't tune factory ECUs because I don't. I don't ever do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't ever use HP tuners or any of those things. And you can't just run a factory ECU and do all these changes. You have to go in and reprogram the ECU. And the factory ECU. If it gives you 29 degrees of timing and you tune it so that it gives you 12.8 to one air fuel, the power will be exactly the same. And if you want to see what they do with accessories and stuff, just check out the accessory video. We know what they do. One fourteen is awfully wide. Uh, none of these cams had 114 degree lobe separation angles. I believe that's a myth that an LS needs a white LSA. I don't think anybody ever said that. What type of fuel pump and what size injector? The, the size injector that you need is going to be a function of your power output. And it's really easy. You take the injector flow rate and multiply it by 16. That will tell you how much power those injectors will support. And then you need a fuel pump that will supply the amount of fuel that you're trying to produce with your motor or the kind of power and the fuel flow requirement. Somebody else may be able to answer that with HP tuners on a stock ECU. Would it be worth tuning math and speed density to get rid of power enrichment? So somebody else can answer that. I'm not sure. Are vacuum pumps worth the price and pain? Sometimes. We've tested vacuum pumps and had it be worth not very much. A lot of it is a function of the ring pack that you're using. Yeah, kind of the go-to for injector stuff for most things that are less than 1,000 horsepower, an 80-pound injector, 450 wall rolls, or something thereabouts. Uh, 
Uh, I've done a lot of testing. The question was, have you done much testing with vacuum pumps and um, adding plenum volume? I've done lots of testing with plenum volume. I've done a couple of tests with vacuum pumps and Brule and the guys at West Tech have done a number of tests with vacuum pumps. And like I said, it depends on a, a lot of other things, not just the pump. It depends on how much vacuum you're trying to pull. depends on what, what your ring pack is. Um, it depends on other things too, not just the pump versus not a pump. Let's see. How much boost can I run from a Vortec on a 10 to one cast piston small block forward with iron heads? Are, is it intercooled? Do you have good fuel? All of those things are gonna come into play. Well, uh, Travis, it, it should do what? Flat top pistons milled 243 and a cam with at least 230 and then it take should do what? I'm scrolling back, Travis, to try to see what you were talking about. But I'm not seeing it. And I'm already too far back. So I don't know what the question was. Of an L86, I'm going to shoot for at least 500 horsepower in a, um, you're going to have to have a ported head on a 243, not a milled one. Well, the milled one will help. Richard, when will you be testing trick flow intakes on a 462 valve? I don't have any two valves. Hopefully I can make 450 horsepower on my all motor 5.4. Yep, Terry, now you should, man. If you haven't done it, I recommend it to everyone. <laughs> I was thinking of going with the Walbro 450, 80 pound injectors, what brand injectors. Most people use DECAs. I, I did Excels. I think that those are all pretty similar. I would get some hunter tuned or snake eater injectors. I have a set of snake eaters also, and I've run them and they've worked good for me. Rust hoarder garage, 2253 stock other than larger injectors. Can I get 500 wheel horsepower with the GT 45 on 93 or I need E85 to allow more timing? No, I think 500 wheel horsepower is, is possible with that with 93. It'd be real easy if you put a camshaft in it. If you put a cam and springs in it, then you could do it at a much lower boost level. Would a completely stock 6.2 LS3 require any modifications for an LSA blower swap? I didn't know about the front dress, uh, all of that assembly, but the internal part of the motor, I would recommend putting ring gap in it. And you'd do much better. Uh, you'd be much better off putting a better camshaft in it. It would be fun and a challenge to build over 500 horsepower with a 5.3 NA. It's just heads, cam, and intake. I mean, we ran headers and that stuff on it too. But it's not. I mean, that's why I showed that there's lots of ways to do it. There's lots of different cylinder heads you can use. Lots of different intake manifolds, lots of different camshafts that you can use. They're all going to be kind of like that. Um, we're going to try to do it again with the, I talked to Brian Tooley, and we're going to try to do it again with a much smaller camshaft. Though We're going to try to do it with a hot rod cam, and I think that it's possible. What stall converter with a 230, 240 camshaft? It's going to have to be pretty big. It's going to be, have to be a 2800 or 3000 or something. Is 8.5 dynamic compression ratio in a truck too much for pump 91? Uh, yes, no, I don't know. It's that the dynamic compression ratio isn't going to determine, isn't going to determine what you can do on um, 91 octane. That that sort of correlation is not a causal thing. It's they're just correlated. Um, the air temperature that you have, the the water temperature, the fuel um, <laughs> is it really ninety one? Um, 
a lot of other things are going to affect that other than just your dynamic compression. Is the chamber softened? Is it more prone to detonation? There's lots of things going on there. Major thunderstorms here. Yeah, we're, we're getting plenty of rain. Does a 5.3 have a 4-inch bore? No, it has a 3.780 bore. Richard, I've got an L33. I'm putting an airboat. I need to make 500 horsepower and a mountain of torque at 6,000 RPM and below. You're not going to do that. You're not going to make 500 horsepower with a 5.3 below 6,000 RPM. You can make good torque down there, but you won't make 500 horsepower. I think these all made peak power at probably 6,700 or something. Yeah, 66, 67 for the, the Strictly Performance deal. I can look up the others. Nit the nitrous one probably was at least that high, I think, because it had a good size cam in it and it had the... Um, Yeah, that one was 67, 6,800. And they're they're making peak torque at 55 or 5,600 RPM. So <laughs> that'd be hard to do unless you you could make it bigger. And if it's if you don't make it a 5.3, if you make it a 5.7, your your life would be a lot easier. It would be much easier. Turbocharged. So we'll go down to our Big Bang Truckin, 5.3 liter NA. That one make peak power at, yeah, same thing. Peak power at 66, <laughs> 67, kind of like all of them. Uh, peak torque was at 42, 5,600. At 6,000, you're not too far off. These are making 491 horsepower, so that's pretty good. Um, it's not 500, but it's it's pretty close to that. Why is an LS1 feels like it has the most torque uh, compared to what? A 5.7 LS1 makes pretty good torque, especially compared to a 5.3 or 4.8, but not compared to a 6.0 or 6.2. I feel about decap injectors. I've run them a few times. And the problem with decap injectors is if you send eight in and have them decapped, you have to flow all of them to make sure that they all came out the same. It's very rare that they do. Usually you have to go through a couple of sets that you do and then match them so that those all flow the same. So it's not just, oh, I have 80 pound injectors and I decap them and now they're all 150s or whatever and they're all e perfectly even that's i haven't ever seen that be the case why does an ls1 with a big cam and fast intake with big injectors make 700 it doesn't no no ls1 with a big cam makes 700 horsepower <laughs> You can give Texas Speed your motor size and parts combos, and they will give you a tune for it. Okay. Do you think a single plane port EFI will make more power than a Holly Stealth Ram on a 425 horse 383? No. Um, I have that test. I have a single plane versus a Stealth Ram. And I don't know if you mean peak power or what what your power output thing is. Um, what do we run that on? I'm thinking that that was a stroker. TPI shootout. So final stealth ram, TPIS, SLP. Did I run? A, I don't think we ran a single plane. I don't think I did. Uh, maybe I did. What is the Holly? Holly EFI. 
Test description. Let's see what that was. Yes, a Holly converted single plane versus a stealth ram. I think the stealth ram. So 489. Yeah, the stealth ram, they, they made about the same peak power, but the stealth ram made more average power than the than the single plane did. I'd like to see a 5340 LA3 stroke with flat tops, LS3 heads, LS3 intake. Uh, you'd have to do some massaging on the bore size to get a LS3 head to fit on even the 5.7 bore, even the 3.900 bore. The, the valve <laughs> might just not kiss the side of the cylinder, but you have to do some notching on it to make it work. You ever turned a tune to blow through car for the street? No, only for the dyno, which is very easy because all we care about is wide open throttle. Have you ever run a BTR stage two twin turbo cam? Yes, we ran that on one of the big bang motors. Oh, I currently run precision 80 pound matched injectors. Very good manners for a streetcar. Have you ever run a brand new GM 5362 have copper color in the oil on the first one or two oil changes? Copper color? Is it shiny? Hopefully not. Hopefully it's not bearing material. Is it safe to bore my five liter 302 to four inch? It already it already is at four inches. Todd's in the house. Let's see. Richard needs to do a twin turbo V10 just once. I agree that I do, do, do need to do the modular forward one. I have an 0653 that has Gen 4 internals. I just did a sloppy stage 2 cam, 243 heads, got the rings. In my A4 WS6, I was out running an M3 SS full bolt-ons. I've always wondered what the motor made power-wise. A 5.3 with 243 heads and a sloppy stage 2 cam. I, I don't know what intake manifold's on it, but lucky for you, you could go to the channel and you could take a look at the test that I did on the sloppy stage 2 cam in a L33 all aluminum junkyard 5.3 that has those 243 heads on it. And you can see exactly what it makes. In fact, I can tell you exactly what it makes. Or you could watch the video. Watching the video would be better. Because then, you know, you get to enjoy all the all the goodness. Let's see. 5.3 L33 cam test. Truck Norris stock cam. Red Hot. That's not it. I don't think that that has a sloppy stage two in there. One, that's not it. And we're scrolling. Aluminum five point three sloppy stage two cam with headers. So this one had uh, two forty three heads on it. It had a truck intake manifold. It had inch and seven eighths long tube headers on it. And it made, and that sloppy stage two cam made 441 horsepower and 415 or 16 foot pounds of torque. That should give you an idea. The 
The live is so delayed. It's not delayed. I have just scrolled back to try to answer more questions. In fact, I'm going to go to live chat right now instead of... I'm just scrolling back so I can get all the questions. Let's see. Uh, Chevelle fan, no, no problem, man. It's, it's good to have data. I've noticed the stroke of a 535760 are exactly the same. That's right. Assuming that boring a 5.3 to 5.7 will allow using the 5.7 pistons. That's right. And some guys have even bored them out to 6 liter status and made them 6 liters. Although you have to make sure that you have the or have the blocks sonic checked. Um, because they, <laughs> that might be going too far. There may be not enough wall thickness. What size exhaust housings flanges did the twin S475 Big Bang 6 liter turbo have? It had T4s because we, we specified T4s for that because we knew we were doing twins. S480 on a 396. Is it a 396 big block? Should the stock connecting rods with rod bolts need to be replaced? I don't think so. Rod bolts, I'd be more concerned with rod bolts with RPM than I would be with boost. Any plans for building an 800 to 1,000 horsepower NA stroker using an aftermarket block? You mean an LS? If you mean an LS, I've already done that. It, it made 820 or 30 or something. And it was a it was an RHS block. And we did that years and years and years ago. It would it's not a thousand horsepower, it's 800 and something. Thinking of putting a 4.8 in a 90 short bed, short cab long bed. Wayne's happy to help, man. Why do you believe in Denso plugs, but not Denso injectors? Are you, if that is that question for me? Cause I wasn't aware that I didn't believe in some kind of injector. And if that's, and if that's directed at me, I also don't know why you would think I believe in Denso plugs. <laughs> I'm not a fan of one particular thing over something else. All I've done is test lots of stuff. And so you get to decide whether you want to use them or not. We use Denso plugs in the Bonneville car and have used them in a lot of stuff on the engine dyno, mostly because they were there. <laughs> but I've also put other kinds of plugs, NGKs and champions. As I saw, if you look at the video that I did on the E3 stuff, we ran E3s and auto lights and NGKs. And then the plugs that came out of there were a conglomeration of factory AC Delco plugs, Champions, and Bosch plugs, I think. So that, that encompasses basically everything. I haven't ever done anything with flatheads. There are guys who are making custom cylinder heads for V10 modulars. Maybe you could test their cylinder heads for them. Anyone know what happened with the crazy engine companies that were making LS four cylinder or V16 or V12 LS? Those aren't all the same people. The four cylinder thing is blueprint and the V12 stuff is a, is a real thing though. I was, I remember seeing those at SEMA. Richard, is it true? The 706 heads are the best stock heads for boost. There is no best stock head for boost. All of the stock heads work just fine. The reason that I would select 706 heads is because they were the ones that came on the motor. And so it's just most convenient. But if I had an LS that had a 241 head on it, like a 5.7 or 6.0 that had 317s or, or 243s or whatever it had on it, I would just use those because they'll all work and they'll all make power. And the difference between the heads when you're boosting it, if you have a thousand horsepower turbo, none of those heads are going to stop you from making a thousand horsepower.
What's the most you can bore an aluminum 5.3? I don't know. I don't know if you can go to the the 3900 on an aluminum 5.3. I think you can because I think that the sleeve is that big. I think that's one of the reasons that they're so strong, but I can't swear to that. I've never done that at a machine shop. Sean, thank you very much. What makes them forge crankshafts 1,000 and others 3,000? Um, probably the metallurgy, the name on the crank, and also the amount of detail that they put into the work that they do. What's your best opinion on releasing crank case pressure? We always run open breathers on LS stuff on everything we run on the engine dyno. I don't run them back into the intake manifold. I think that that's a terrible idea. I think it's a terrible idea in a car also, not just on the dyno, but we run a big three quarter inch like heater hose or whatever from the valve cover. And then we also, on the other side, on the passenger side, where the oil fill is, we have that open. And if it has a center valley that has a breather on it, we have that open too. We just have lines running up. They're elevated so that any sort of oil wouldn't be dripping out. And then the one on the driver's side valve cover, we just have that with a long, like I said, three-quarter heater hose going from an, a, usually an aluminum AN fitting or something going from the, we use the same, try to use the same valve cover all the time. And then that just angles back, back behind the dyno. Can you get a 600 horsepower and a six liter with stock LS3 heads and piston change for piston to valve clearance? With stock LS3 heads, there's enough head flow there to do it. Um, I personally haven't done it, but, and maybe probably not with a stock LS3 intake manifold. I haven't done that. Usually it takes a, um, a bigger cam. Well, I don't know. A bigger cam might get you there. There's enough head flow. Definitely. If the, if you're going to use stock heads, maybe mill them a little bit and get, get more compression, maybe pour them a little bit. And then with an intake manifold that makes power at a higher engine speed than a LS3 does, you can definitely make more power. Twin scroll turbo wastegates on both banks or on a turbo housing or just one bank. I don't, most people normally put the housing, the, the wastegate on the housing for packaging. Um, but on a twin scroll, maybe you need two wastegates on there. When you get time, you should look into the L8T LT4 cross engine builds. I think they're they're cool. Yeah, the L8T has a lot of potential. It has a lot of strength. Richard, if you were to revisit the Big Bang 48 today with a 1500 horsepower goal, what turbos and other parts would you use now versus what was available 10 years ago? Everything was available 10 years ago for me to be able to do that. I just didn't do it. I picked the cheapest turbos that I could get at the time. And those were those 76 millimeters. And if I was getting, if I was going to make 1500, we just put big, good turbos on it. Like we just put those S475s on it. And I didn't run, um, I did not run ice water on the 4.8. I also didn't run E85, which I probably would. And I would run probably more engine speed on the 4.8 this time. I think I would run a different camshaft in there also. Maybe. I think it's just a matter of running more boost on the 4.8. How do you find larger injectors for a second gen LT4 small block Chevy? They come with 24 injectors and I want to make 500 horsepower. There's lots of injectors available for that. That's just a, um, I think that the LT, does the LT have like the, um, I think that those have the, um, what is it, AC Delco or what the heck are those called? But you can put any kind of any kind of Bosch. The look at the 36 pounders that they have for the from Ford for from some of those. Any sort of aftermarket injector, you can put an 80 pound injector in there. There's lots and lots of different injectors that you could use on that that just will go right in.
Can I make an iron LS6 out of a 48 block with two 43 heads? Yes, you can. You the 48 block you can use bore it to we normally go to 3905. You could you could do 3890. You could do a stock bore um, LS7, and then you could put that camshaft in it. And you but you'd have to also put the you'd want the um, 53 crank and and rods, and then put the 48 flat top pistons on. That would be good. Little Kevin, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much. <laughs> 500 horsepower, all, more, all motor 454 is where it's at. It is good. I, I wish that I could, I haven't done that with a, I haven't gotten 500 horsepower out of a junkyard 454 out of a stock bottom end yet. And I'd like to do that. And I'd like to do it with the stock heads too. Is L7 lifters the same push rod height as stock? I don't know. I, I've never measured that. I've meant to do that a bunch of times because people have asked me that. I don't know what the plunger depth is on that. Question for you. What do dash six AN fuel lines and rails max out on E85? Well, if this gives you any idea, this should tell you that you might be worried about I don't know how much power you're trying to do, but if it's a, if it's a single S480 turbo, you don't have to worry about any of that because on the, on the O3 Cobra, we ran factory fuel rails, which are five sixteenths at a thousand horsepower. So your <laughs> dash six is fine. Can you put a turbo right after the cat? Yes. You can put it anywhere in the exhaust as shown by some of these remote turbo things. Are you modifying factory heads? If that question is to me, yes, we have many times. We have run lots of these motors with the, like we ran the 215 heads and the 220 heads and the KTEC 706 heads were modified factory heads. They were stock 706s that were ported. We've also done other versions of those and ported 243 heads and ported 317 heads on some of these big bang motors. We've modified factory heads a lot. The thing that you have to watch out for on factory heads with turbo LS deals is that the deck thickness on a factory head not very stout. So you're you're probably going to lift a factory head if you really try to turn it up. Five hundred horsepower on a five three. Our heads, Victor Junior EFI. How much camshaft? We'll take a look at what we were just talking about. The, it's all, all of these cams that are in the two thirty range or so. And uh, Victor Junior EFI, not a great choice for intake manifold. There's much better, much better intake manifolds for that. Forty-two thousand pounds of fertilizer. That's a lot. Can you have too much duration split? If so, could a 211, 230 split be too much on a 489 with Edelbrock heads? I don't know what you mean by too much. Too much for what? I mean, that to give you an idea, that's a factory camshaft for an LS. That's a factory LS9 camshaft. 211, 230 is about what a factory LS camshaft is. So it works fine. <laughs> That that's for a that's for a supercharged application, but it runs it. We've run it many times on NA four eights and five threes and six O's. Chris, you have a 04, 08 Tahoe rebuilding the engine, five overbore, want to make 400 wheel horsepower. What size motor is that? NA capabilities of Gen 4 rods and a Max Everett 5.3 for a drag car where they handle 14 to 1 compression above. The compression, they don't care about. We The, the Gen 4 rod made 1,540 horsepower and 1,330 foot-pounds with stock rods in them on, on turbo applications. So what you're talking about is not an issue at all. People say the cat slows down exhaust flow. It would be restrictive. There's no doubt about it, but it should 
create quicker efficiency from getting up the temperature fast? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if you would see that. I, I would be most interested in the, the flow rate of the cat. And either way, you're going to have to flow the stuff through the cat, whether it's before or after the turbo. I'd like to see the difference in a Bluebird injector and a DECA. That would probably be best done on injector flow machine. Not sure how much extra power 5.7 makes over 5.3. Here in Australia, there's lots of people making 450 horsepower to the wheels with a 4,000 stall and burnout cars. Yeah, I have 5.7s, NA 5.7s that are 550, 560, 570 um, at the flywheel. So that would be right about where that is. And, and a 5.7 is just a bigger 5.3 and, and a smaller 6.0. Uh, there's nothing different about it other than its displacement. Who do you think specs the best custom camshafts out there for LS engines? I, I don't think that that's a, I don't think that that's a real thing. I don't think there's one guy that's better than everybody else. And I don't think there's one camshaft that's going to be the best camshaft for your application. I think that there's lots of camshafts that will do the thing that you need it to do. Bear, 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 bear. Have you tested max speed and connecting rods? I don't think I have. I have tested their turbos, but not their connecting rods. Trying to find a 2500 Avalanche with an 8.1 in it to tow my cars with. Those are, those are, this would be really good tow motors. What if basically all you do is throw a cam and a 5.3 and run carburetor style fuel injection? You can do that. You can run some sort of converted carburetor, like a, uh, I think both Holly and Edelbrock make EFI versions of their single plane and dual plane manifolds. And you can run that. I've, I have lots of videos up on doing that. Have you done an X pipe versus an H pipe comparison? No, but the engine masters guys have, and there was very, very little difference in power between those two. Five, three question was for a small block Ford. Oh, 331. Okay. AFR heads, TFS track heat intake manifold. How much cam to get 500 horsepower NA? Uh, I don't know if you'll get there with that intake manifold. On a, when we were doing 347s, we ran the, we ran dual plane intake manifolds on them, usually like an RPM air gap and a carburetor. And we ran good heads on them, like an airflow research head or a trick flow uh, 11R head. And then we would run that 248 um, XFI camshaft, which is 236, 248 at 50 and mid to high 500 lift, if I remember right. And But those would be like 450, 460 horsepower, I think, on a 347. So 500 horsepower is going to be a lot of camshaft. Two eleven two thirty is a Chevy performance cam for a Gen six four fifty four. Okay. Richard, my father tells me the width of the H pipe and the amount of overlap in an X pipe greatly. I don't know what you mean by overlap in an X pipe. They they the guys at Engine Masters tested an X pipe and an H pipe, and there was it's hard to see the difference in the power curves. You have run the Summit LS408 Stroker kit before. Did hold up? I don't think I've run that one. We we've done. Um, I've run some 408 Strokers before, but it didn't come from Summit. And I have run 408 Stroker 
motors that were already built. And I think that those are ATKs and maybe blueprint stuff. And they worked out just fine. What are the best flowing heads for a 5.3? In my opinion, the best heads for a 5.3 are either ported 706, 862 heads. You can run ported um, 243 heads on there, although I think that the, the chamber size is a little bit big for the if you're running a, a standard bore 5.3 or 4.8. But the 205 trick flow head is really good. I've also run 215s, and all of those flow way more power flow enough airflow to support way more power than you're going to make with a 5.3. I'm thinking about buying BTR LS7 lifters, but I bought 7.4 inch push rods from JEGS already. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You should only buy the push rods after you've measured them for the push rod length. Would this make 500 horsepower, stock bottom end, small block Ford 351, TFS uh, 236, 248, Victor Jr., Victor Jr. intake? I don't think it will. I'm trying to remember. I don't, I think when I did the Edelbrock intake upgrade, let's see. I think it was 450 or 460. Double A done results. Small block Ford 351. 351 Edelbrock top end kit. Yeah, the top end kit was 460 horsepower. This description was uh, Edelbrock CNC 185 heads, RPM air gap intake, 750 Holly Percy carburetor. That camshaft was 573, 582, 235, 239. So maybe a single plane would help you a little bit, but it's not going to be 40 horsepower. Gen 4 iron block, 24X, crank rod, 383 stroker, 226, 234. I have 383 videos up, and you can kind of see where, uh, where that would be. Um, I've done 600 horsepower with a 383, but it took basically everything to do it. Horsepower gains by just porting factory LS heads. Yeah, you can. You Porting factory heads can take you from wherever they are factory, whatever they'll support factory. Most of the factory heads are between 230 and 250 CFM. And if you port them, they can easily be way over 300 CFM, meaning they'll support way over 600 horsepower. If you know how to port them and do the things that are necessary to do that, the average guy doesn't know how to do that, but really good guys do. Are you supposed to change the injectors and heads to run a turbo on a 5.3 or 6.0? Definitely yes on injectors because you need more fuel flow, not necessarily the heads. Richard, did I hear you say once that LS coils don't make any more power than a single coil distributor normally aspirated? Not if you're, are you putting them on a LS coils on a big block or some, or trying to do that? I wouldn't waste my time doing ignition upgrades on that any, any more than either having an HEI that works or a distributor and maybe an MSD or other kind of ignition amplifier. And quite honestly, on an NA motor, I wouldn't even do that. I would just run an MSD. You're not going to just run an MSD, bring the plug gap down to 30 thousandths or something, and, and it will do everything that an, NS, an NA motor would do. If you're running boost, 
then I would put in an ignition amplifier on it and then I'd bring the plug gap way down, but I wouldn't do individual coils because you're, you're not going to get anything from that. What's the compression ratio of a six liter dish piston? So an LQ4 with 706 heads. Justin, you should go to Wallace Racing. Just do a search for Wallace Racing compression calculator and you can put in all your information and play all you want with different combinations. It'll tell you exactly what you got. What would a Whipple three liter on an LS six liter with a rec port head make? Whatever that blower could support. I don't know what that is, but it's certainly a thousand horsepower blower. Is there a way to mate a Ford T5 to a 5.3 liter? Somebody else maybe might know that. I don't know if, if you can switch or if there was another T5 that you could bolt to a 5.3. The, the Ford 5 liter bell housing is not going to work. I know that. Why do DI engines build up so much carbon on the stem side of the valve? They, because they don't have anything to clean them off. They don't have fuel spraying in there. There's a guy who has a 5.3 making 500 horsepower. He's running a quick fuel 950 Super Victor, two inch spacer, ported 241 head, 13 to one compression. Yeah, so he has all the things that he needs. That 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 should make 500. If does he did he run it on the dyno and stuff? Did he verify that? But uh, Super Victor is enough intake manifold to make that kind of peak power. The power is not going to be good down in the range that we're talking about where the fast is because the Super Victor is a big single plane in it and it. It's pretty good for peak power, but not that good for average power. But it has, if it, if the ported heads were done correctly, it has lots of compression. And he's also going to have a big camshaft in that to make that power too. I have a G body that I'm LS swapping with a 5.3. I want to make at least 500, but I don't want to spend an arm and leg. The easiest way to make 500 horsepower is with boost. I have the same sweatshirt. I do like in the winter. I do like these like um, lined ones. They're awesome. Dominic 239, 242, 111, six liter LS2 NA stock. Otherwise, so that doesn't, it has a stock intake manifold and, and heads on it then. So it's, it's a cammed LS, LS2. Uh, I have some Cam Dallas 2 stuff. I got you. Dallas Cathedral Port, 6 liter. Let's see some. I ran a, I had a stock LS2. What the heck was this? That's got to be a near stock one. Yeah, that is a stock LS2. For training, six liter. Stock red line. Some kind of cam. File test description. No, it's got ported heads on it. I think a better idea would be for me to look at, although it's not going to have flat top pistons, but it'll give us an idea. It'll be close. We can look at the LY6 stuff. It doesn't have a flat top piston, but we ran um, 799 heads on it. So a cammed six liter with a decent cam in it that will fit available piston to valve clearance. And those stock 243 heads with that LS2 
intake manifold. What, in, what intake manifold? This is probably was an LS6 or something. Dorman LS2, so it's probably a little better. I'm, I'm thinking you're in the 500 range, below 500s. Two thirty nine cams with a one eleven five LSA seems like a lot on a stock motor to me. Seems like a doesn't fit piston to valve clearance kind of thing. Let's see. Let's see. Eric, twin GT3582s, LQ9, 21 pounds of back pressure to 18 pounds of boost. That's 1.5. That's pretty good. Can I make 500 foot pounds with a 5.3? Yes, you can with boost. Stock 5.3. I don't know what stage 3 cam you're talking about. <laughs> Can you slip on band clamps to get exhaust to the turbo? I don't I don't know what you're talking about. A stock LM7 with just a cam and spring can make 450 horsepower. Yeah, the way that we tested it can. I'm having trouble with what cam to get. Well, just pick one. There's lots of good ones. <laughs> Look at all the tests I just ran recently on the L33. You can see the we ran a sloppy stage two. We've run a hot rod cam. We've run a red hot cam. We've run the truck Norris cam. We've run, and you have every, and we have run the stock one. We have all the stuff to choose from. Osman, thank you very much. It's been a few minutes. It's about around a round of Kool-Aid. I'm all for that. Thank you very much. Is the Envoy Aluminum 5.3 a truck front accessory or something else? I have no idea about accessory stuff. Are twin GT35s big? Will the GT35s be too small for my, is my question. I don't know what you mean. Too big for what? Twin GT3582s will make over a thousand horsepower. So what is your goal? What is your power goal? Are you or Brian G ever going back to Vaunaville? I would like to go back to Vaunaville. I want to go back with something fairly specific that in mind. I would like to go back with the, <laughs> and set some Chevy Sprint turbo records. Is it worth it to switch to flat top pistons with ported heads? Do they allow more or less valve clearance with ported heads? This is for a small block Chevy LT4. If you put a forged piston in that's a flat top, it will also have valve reliefs. So it would allow you to put more camshaft in if that's what your question is. First time here, I have a 4.6 with trick flow heads and cam getting only 250 wheel horsepower. It probably should be a little bit more than that. I'd like to see some LSR videos. I think I have some in, I think I have the, the Bonneville footage of the Civic. That video is up. I think I put the in-car footage, but it's just, wah, just, I need to show the data logging and all that stuff. Uh, Max, so you want to make low speed power with a 5.3? The first thing I do is make it bigger. Uh, I don't know that I'd use an aluminum one for a marine application. I might use an iron one and I would bore it and make it a 5.7 instead of a 5.3. It will definitely make more low speed power. Or you start out with a six liter that will definitely make more low speed power. Stay with a long runner intake manifold. You could go with a little more compression, a small, mild camshaft, and then 
Eh, I don't even know that I worry about porting the heads. Uh, test ruthenium spark plugs. Uh, I, I can, but <laughs> we know what they're going to do. I, I'm kind of spark plugged to death already. I, I'm going to go ahead and close out our poll at 91%, which might be the new 100, saying no, that they haven't, but 9% of you have made more than 500 horsepower. The um, precious metal plugs are not going to make any more power. I think I could go out on a limb and say that now. Are the hot rod cam and the red hot cam the same? No, the red hot cam is actually bigger than the hot rod cam. And the hot rod cam would be the one that I would recommend more often. Both of those cams are actually designed for LS3s. And I'm running them in a 5.3 because, you know, every cam is a, every cam. <laughs> So then you should build a drop take lakes here. I really like those. West Tech has a very cool photo of um, belly tankers and, and P-51s and P-40s, I think, flying overhead with the Bonville guys. It's really cool. Can you make a super high RPM build? I have an 8,000 RPM uh, hydraulic roller video up already. So that's as much as I would go. I don't, the, the RPM stuff gets very, very expensive. And then the gains are just not worthwhile for that. And plus the guys, Ben and the, the great guys over at um, EFI University have done 10 or 11,000 RPM versions. So you're, you know, you're not going to compete with that and they do really good stuff. What would you guess the horsepower on a 94 Impala SS LT1 comp cams? I don't know what specs are on that cam. So it's just a cammed um, LT1. So you probably picked up 30 or 40 horsepower or something like that, I would guess. I don't know what the specs are on that camshaft. I'm just guessing. Coils and ruthenium tests only on the turbo engine. The I, I can test coils, but we're <laughs> because we already have enough coil testing a coil that even if the coil had more voltage or whatever, you have to create a situation where the more voltage coil cures a problem. But if a problem doesn't exist, like it doesn't exist in the in so far from 1500 horsepower or more than 1500 horsepower and below, we've used factory coils and there's no problem with them. You have to create a problem and then cure the problem with some sort of aftermarket coil. Otherwise, there isn't a problem and you're not going to get any power. What is the reason that the LS engines make more power per liter than a small block Ford? Better heads, windage tray, <laughs> intake manifolds. There's lots of them. Have you had any experience with the crow cams from Australia? I have not. I don't think I've ever even heard of them, but I don't, I'm not hip on all the Australian stuff, but have you tested the red hot, the truck Norris? Yes. That, that video, I think that the results are already up. When do you recommend going solid roller over 260 degrees of duration? Brule runs solid rollers on all big blocks. <laughs> so he recommends that immediately on LS stuff. I don't ever re recommend going solid roller. Are short tube headers really needed versus long tubes? Short tube headers, shorty headers don't really gain any power. They may gain power on some weird applications that I haven't tested, but every application I've tested on versus stock exhaust manifolds, they don't really gain anything. They, they weigh less, so there's a gain there. But if you're trying to get a gain in power, long tube headers are the way to go. Any videos showing what horsepower change increase bore makes LQ4 stock to 4030? I've never done just a bore change. But it's a fairly easy calculation. If you have a motor and you know what the power output is, and it's making 400 horsepower, and it has this displacement, you can calculate the horsepower per cubic inch or horsepower per liter, however you want to do it. And then you've increased that. You can use that math to give you a fairly good idea. Uh, have you tested Endyne cams? I have tested Endyne Honda cams. I 
Have you ever tried tuning headers or exhaust? Yes, I've tried. Uh, uh, lots of times I've made adjustable headers. So we've changed the primary lengths and, and adjusted that. And I've tested lots, like when I did my Honda Del Sol, when we were running at US Touring Car, I tried 15, 15 different header configurations on it. Crazy how LSs make 100 horsepower per liter or close to it. Yeah, we I've done 600 horsepower, six liters, and but it takes a, a good bit to do it. I have four, I got 450 wheel horsepower. Four hundred and thirty foot pounds of the tire out of a five seven. I don't know what supporting engine upgrades. What what intake manifold is that? A BTR intake? The the short runner deal? Uh, a two forty three head doesn't flow very much more than a two forty one head. What you need is a ported head. At what point do you need to fly cut the pistons? Sometime before your valves hit your pistons. Matthew, yours will be the last thing for tonight. I got to get going. LS3 stock heads, LS3 intake, 231 cam. Too big for an NA application. It depends on, you have to ask yourself what you're trying to do. We've run that kind of camshaft a lot in LS3s, if that's what you have. And the stock head, that camshaft won't be too much for the stock head. The stock head will support 300 or four, 650 horsepower. That camshaft is not going to make anywhere near that. That camshaft is going to be on an LS3, that sort of camshaft with a headers and the way that we run it, the LS3 probably would make 550 or so uh, with that camshaft in it. But so, but whether it drives around nicely for you or not is going to be a function of, is it a stick or is it an automatic? Does it an automatic, does it have a stall? How much drivability do you want? How much is idle quality? How, how important is that to you? All those things are going to be much more of a question than like how much power does it make? And on that note, it's time to get going. Thank you guys all for showing up. I will be back tomorrow morning and then obviously back seven o'clock tomorrow. Pow, bang, zoom to the moon.